It is claimed that 9-11 was done by Osama bin Laden and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, through the organization of Al-Qaeda. None of this is true. In this video, we will show, that Osama bin Laden never claimed responsibility. That Khalid Sheikh Mohammed only confessed under torture. That Al-Qaeda does not even exist. And that it are, Israelis, that create the illusion of Al-Qaeda. Contrary to popular belief, Bin Laden never claimed responsibility for 9-11. This has been confirmed by multiple independent sources. Osama Bin Laden, number one on everybody's most wanted list in the world today, is saying that once again that he did not do it. Don't hold him responsible. He's not guilty. He, of course, is the man that um, has been fingered by just about everybody in the world. And now he's released a statement um, really underlining that he he had nothing to do with it. So let's go through the statement. There's some interesting aspects to this. He said, after the recent attacks which the U.S. has witnessed, the U.S. government ventured to point fingers at me, accuse me of involvement. The U.S. government has consistently blamed me for being behind every occasion its enemies attack it, that is the United States. And it goes on. I would like to assure the world that I did not plan the recent attacks, which seems to have been planned by people for personal reasons. And as for me, I have been living in the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and following its leader's rules. The current leader does not allow me to exercise such operations. Pakistan tomorrow will deliver a warning to the Taliban. Hand over prime suspect Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden issues a public statement denying any personal responsibility. Spokesman for the Taliban denies Afghanistan allowed bin Laden to strike from its territory. We in Afghanistan do not allow Osama bin Laden to use Afghanistan's territory to launch attacks against any country around the world. We took away all communication devices from him and he does not have any communication with anybody outside of Afghanistan. In any case, we will conduct our own investigation and find out what happened. And we denounce this terrorist attack, whoever is behind it. Our position in this uh, regard is uh, that if America have uh, evidence and proofs, they should produce it, and we are ready for the trial of Osama uh, bin Laden in the light of evidence. Are you willing to hand Osama bin Laden to the United States or not? No, no, no. no. With, without evidence, no. No evidence was presented, but Afghanistan was invaded. Osama bin Laden continued to deny his or any other Afghan's involvement. President Bush's redirection in Iraq is leading some Americans to ask themselves, just how did we get here? Less than a month after the attacks of September the 11th, America began its war on terror in Afghanistan and the hunt for Osama bin Laden. Tonight, KSLA News 12's Jeff Farrell takes a closer look at these origins and discovered something that's still conspicuously absent. The FBI's 10 Most Wanted poster reads, quote, Osama bin Laden is wanted in connection with the August 7, 1998 bombings of the United States embassies in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and Nairobi, Kenya. These attacks killed over 200 people. In addition, bin Laden is a suspect in other terrorist attacks throughout the world. It turns out, though, bin Laden has never been indicted for 9-11. And there's not a single mention of it directly in the FBI poster. Sheila Thorne in the FBI's New Orleans office told us, quote, the indictment could be superseded if necessary. In other words, 9-11 charges could be tacked on later for something many describe as the Pearl Harbor of our generation. As for why there is no mention at all of 9-11 in the FBI's 10 most wanted poster of Osama bin Laden, we wanted to get a comment from the White House as well. When we talked to a gentleman by the name of Blair Jones at the White House press office, he told us that we need to go back to justice, in other words, the FBI. We told him we wanted a separate comment, and he said, quote, we speak with one voice. The FBI stated, the reason why 9-11 is not mentioned on Osama bin Laden's Most Wanted is because the FBI has no hard evidence connecting bin Laden to 9-11.
Khalid Sheikh Mohammed confessed, but only after heavy torture. Idaho attorney David Nevin represents the most well-known defendant in the case against the alleged 9-11 plotters, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Mohammed has been in custody since 2003. For more than three years, he was held in secret CIA black sites around the world and subjected to enhanced interrogation techniques that many regard as torture. Now, he has confessed to uh, being involved in 9-11 in at, at a high level. Uh, but your contention is that that confession was, came out under duress, under uh, what we now know are uh, multiple enhanced interrogation techniques. It came out in a U.S. Senate report on the issue. Yeah, enhanced interrogation technique is a euphemism for torture. It, uh, what was done to him is unquestionably torture. Uh, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence's uh, uh, executive summary, which was released last December, uh, concluded that w without any doubt. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was strapped to a board, tilted head down, a cloth placed over his face, and water poured over his mouth to give the sensation of drowning. But Rodriguez tells Stahl that Mohammed was tough. They had to pour the water more than 180 times. I think that the cumulative effect of waterboarding and sleep deprivation and everything else that was done eventually uh, got to him. So what happens? Does he break down? Does he weep? Does he fall apart? No. Uh, he gets a good night's sleep. Uh, he gets his insurer. By the way, he was uh, very heavy and when he came to us and uh, he lost 50 pounds. What, so. his insurer? You mean like people in the hospital who drink that stuff? Yes. Dietary manipulation was part of the start techniques. So sleep deprivation, dietary manipulation, I mean, this is Orwellian stuff. The United States doesn't do that. Well, we do. What surprised me the most was the clear acknowledgement that the people who committed the acts of torture committed rape. Um, they raped these people. Uh, they also tortured them. Torture is a 20-year felony uh, under United States law. And rape is a life felony under, in, in most states. You're talking about the rectal rehydration that occurred? Yes, rectal rehydration done without mil uh, medical necessity for the purpose of controlling behavior. And uh, again, uh, rectal rehydration is a euphemism for uh, penetration with a foreign object. And um, uh, so um, the the clarity and the uh, open uh, way in which it was revealed that these things had taken place and the brutality of it was surprising even to me and I'd had plenty of opportunities to talk to my client about it. Uh, he is a torture victim and uh, the history is that people will say anything uh, if they are tortured. And Khalid Sheikh Mohammed said just about anything. Mohammed, also known as KSM, openly testified he was Osama bin Laden's military commander. He then claimed responsibility for a litany of 28 terrorist attacks or plots around the world, and then some. In written testimony, he said he was responsible for the 9-11 operation from A to Z, and for the first attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. He said he was behind the bombing of a nightclub in Bali, the shoe bombing plot to blow up U.S. airliners over the Atlantic, and plans to attack the Sears Tower in Chicago and New York's Empire State Building. For the first time, KSM also claimed to have plotted to assassinate former presidents Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, and Pope John Paul II. His torture was so bad that he wanted to die. The alleged mastermind of the 9-11 attack says he wants the death sentence. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is being held at the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base in Cuba on war crime charges. During his arraignment Thursday, he was told that he could face the death penalty if he's convicted. He responded by saying that's exactly what he was wishing for, so he could, quote, be a martyr for a long time, unquote. The organization of Al-Qaeda could not have been responsible for 9-11 because it does not even exist. Osama bin Laden denies that Al-Qaeda exists. <laughs> وأجهزة الاستخبارات أيضا تتحدث عن أنكم تدورون شبكة واسعة جدا واسعة النطاق تنتشر 
في أربعين أو خمسين دولة حسب بعض الأقوال وأن إمكانات تنظيم القاعدة المالية إمكانات ضخمة جدا وأنتم تستخدمون هذه الإمكانات في كثير مما نفذ من عمليات وتدعمون حركات إسلامية أو حركات تسمى في أماكن أخرى إرهابية السؤال الموجه لكم ما هو مدى ارتباط تنظيم القاعدة وجود تنظيم القاعدة بشخص أسامة بن لادن الحمد لله أقول بالنسبة لما ذكرتم وكرر ما ذكرتم من قبل أن الأمر لا يخص العبد الفقير ولا يخص تنظيم القاعدة نحن أبناء أمة إسلامية قائدها محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا واحد سبحانه وتعالى ونبينا واحد عليه الصلاة والسلام وقبلتنا واحدة ونحن أمة واحدة ولنا كتاب واحد هذا الكتاب الكريم والسنة المطهرة عن نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم ألزمتنا شرعا بأخوة الإيمان فكل المؤمنين إخوة إنما المؤمنون إخوة فليس المسألة كما يصورها الغرب أن هناك تنظيم خاص باسم كذا هذا الاسم قديم جدا ونشأ يعني بدون قصد منا كان الأخ أبو عبيدة عليه رحمة الله البنشيري كون معسكر لتدريب الشباب للقتال ضد الاتحاد السوفيتي الباغي الغاشم الملحد الإرهابي حقيقة للمآمنين فهذا المكان كنا نسميه القاعدة كقاعدة تدريب ثم نمى هذا الاسم وأصبح أما نحن غير منفصلين عن الأمة نحن أبناء أمة ونحن جزء لا يتجزأ منها وما هذه المظاهرات العارمة من أقصى المشرق من الفلبين إلى ماليزيا إلى أندونيسيا إلى الهند وباكستان وأحدث إلى موريتانيا إلا نحن نتحدث عن ضمير الأمة بن لادن was not covering anything up as shown in this BBC documentary Al-Qaeda really never existed In January 2001 a trial began in a Manhattan courtroom of four men accused of the embassy bombings in East Africa. But the Americans had also decided to prosecute bin Laden in his absence. But to do this under American law, the prosecutors needed evidence of a criminal organization. Because as with the Mafia, that would allow them to prosecute the head of the organization, even if he could not be linked directly to the crime. And the evidence for that organization was provided for them by an ex-associate of bin Laden's called Jamal al-Fadl. During the investigation of the 1998 bombings, there is a walk-in source, Jamal al-Fadl, who's a Sudanese militant who was with bin Laden in the early 90s, who has been passed around a whole series of Middle Eastern um, secret services, none of whom want much to do with him, who, who ends up in America and is taken on by uh, the American government effectively as a key prosecution witness and given a huge amount of American taxpayers money at the same time. Um, his account is used as raw material to build up a picture of Al-Qaeda. Uh, the picture that the FBI want to build up is one that will fit the existing laws that they will have to use to prosecute those responsible for the bombing. Now those laws were drawn up to counteract organized crime, the mafia, drugs crime, crimes where people being a member of an organization is extremely important. You have to have an organization to get a prosecution. Uh, and you have Al Fadl and a number of other witnesses, a number of other sources who are happy to feed into this, who've got material that looked at in a certain way can be seen to show this organization's existence. You put the two together and you get what is the first Bin Laden myth, the first Al-Qaeda myth. And because it's one of the first, it's extremely influential. The picture al Fadl drew for the Americans of Bin Laden was of an all-powerful figure at the head of a large terrorist network that had an organized hierarchy of control. He also said that Bin Laden had given this network a name, Al-Qaeda. It was a dramatic and powerful picture of Bin Laden, but it bore little relationship to the truth. The reality was that Bin Laden and Ayman Zawahiri had become the focus of a loose association of disillusioned Islamist militants who were attracted by the new strategy. 
but there was no organization. These were militants who mostly planned their own operations and looked to bin Laden for funding and assistance. He was not their commander. There is also no evidence that bin Laden used the term Al-Qaeda to refer to the name of a group until after September the 11th, when he realized that this was the term the Americans had given him. In reality, Jamal al-Fadl was on the run from bin Laden, having stolen money from him. In return for his evidence, the Americans gave him witness protection in America and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Many lawyers at the trial believed that al-Fadl exaggerated and lied to give the Americans the picture of a terrorist organization that they needed to prosecute bin Laden. And there were selective portions of al-Fadl's testimony that I believe was false to help support the picture that he helped the Americans join together. I think he lied in a number of specific testimony about a unified image of what this organization was. It made Al-Qaeda the new mafia or the new communists. It made them identifiable as a group and therefore made it easier to prosecute any person associated with Al-Qaeda for any acts or statements made by bin Laden, who talked a lot. The idea, which is critical to the FBI's uh, prosecution, that bin Laden ran a coherent organization with operatives and cells all around the world, of which you could be a member, is a myth. There is no Al-Qaeda organization. There is no international network with a leader with carders who will unquestioningly obey orders, uh, with tentacles that stretch out to sleeper cells in America, in Africa, in Europe. Um, that idea of a coherent, structured terrorist network with an organized capability simply does not exist. The search for Osama bin Laden, there was constant discussion about him hiding out in caves, and I think many times the American people have a perception that it's a little hole dug out of a side of a mountain. Oh, no. This is it. This is a fortress. Yes. A complex, multi-tiered, bedrooms and offices on the top, as you can see. Secret exits on the side and, the end, and on the bottom. Cut deep to avoid thermal detection. A ventilation system to allow people to breathe and to carry on. The entrance is large enough to drive trucks and even tanks even computer systems and telephone systems. It's a very sophisticated operation. Oh, you bet. This is serious business. And, and there's not one of those. There are many of those. For days, the Americans bombed the mountains at Tora Bora with the most powerful weapons they had. The Northern Alliance had been paid more than a million dollars for their help and information. And now, their fighters set off up the mountains to storm bin Laden's fortress and bring back the al-Qaeda terrorists and their leader. But all they found were a few small caves, which were either empty or had been used to store ammunition. There was no underground bunker system, no secret tunnels. The fortress didn't exist. The Northern Alliance did produce some prisoners they claimed were al-Qaeda fighters but there was no proof of this. And one rumor was that the Northern Alliance was simply kidnapping anyone who looked remotely like an Arab and selling them to the Americans for yet more money. The Americans now began to search all the caves in all the mountains of eastern Afghanistan for the hidden Al-Qaeda network. We found a cave. The rest of it is uh, open, break. If nobody went up to look into that cave, people could have been hiding up there for days and watching everything that we did. But wherever they looked, there was nothing there. Al-Qaeda seemed to have completely disappeared. But then, the British arrived to help. They were convinced they could hunt down Al-Qaeda because of what they said was their unique experience in fighting terrorism in Northern Ireland. They could succeed where others had failed. The hunt for Al-Qaeda and Taliban goes on. 
and we stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States and our other coalition allies in the global war of terrorism. But how many Al-Qaeda have you captured? We haven't uh, captured any Al-Qaeda. But and, and how many have you actually managed to kill here in southeast Afghanistan? We haven't killed any. The terrible truth was that there was nothing there because Al-Qaeda as an organization did not exist. This was confirmed by the former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai. Obviously, Al-Qaeda was the main reason that the Americans said they were going into Afghanistan and not the Taliban. Are you still of the view that Al-Qaeda is more of a myth than a reality, is what you said last year? You also said you weren't even sure that they existed. Really? Exactly. That's my view today as well. That Al-Qaeda is a myth? It is for me a myth. I have never had a report from any Afghan source on the Al-Qaeda or what they were doing. We don't see them. We cannot visualize them. For us, they don't exist. I've never had a report from our intelligence. I've never had a report from our uh, people. Um, uh, I've never come across them. Did so, they exist in September uh, the 11th? Uh, on September the 11th, 2001, was Al-Qaeda operating in Afghanistan? I have come across the Taliban. I've come across uh, uh, other groups. I've come across... Uh, the people called, uh, you know, uh, uh, calling themselves different names, uh, uh, different outfits uh, of extremists and terrorists. We, we have reports about them. Uh, I don't know if, if, if Al-Qaeda existed or, and, and I don't know if they exist. Uh, for me, it's a myth. I have, to, I, have to be, I have to feel tangible about it before I can say they are there. Do you believe Osama bin Laden uh, carried out the 9-11 attacks in New York and Washington DC and plotted them from Afghanistan? That is what I have heard from uh, our Western uh, friends. Uh, that's what uh, the Western media says. Uh, uh, there is no doubt that an operation uh, uh, was uh, a terrorist operation was conducted in New York and in Washington. Uh, the tragedy of September 11 is, is a true one. It caused uh, casualties to the American people, to civilians. We can limit it in the strongest possible words, but I can tell you for a fact that uh, uh, that operation was neither conducted from Afghanistan, nor were the Afghan people responsible uh, for that. If Al-Qaeda doesn't exist, why has it been constantly on the news? The mainstream media has three sources for their news about Al-Qaeda, memory, sight, and intel center. All of these organizations are led by Israelis. And there are clear signs that they not only distribute Al-Qaeda videos, they create them. The president of memory is Yigal Karmon, who was formerly employed in Israeli intelligence. Memory's co-founder and president, Colonel Yigal Karmon, spent more than 20 years in Israeli intelligence. We only know this because when Memory's website launched in the late 90s, Karmon's military intelligence credentials were a prominent part of his bio. They've since been scrubbed from the site, along with the statement that Memory's research emphasizes the continuing relevance of Zionism to the Jewish people and to the state of Israel. Site is led by Rita Katz. She has served in the Israeli military. Her father was executed in Iraq as an Israeli spy. Rita Katz is consistently able to obtain videos of Islamic terrorists before they are released. How did your organization obtain the video? Hi, uh, we have been, we at SITE have been uh, researching the jihadi threat online for over a decade, follow their steps, monitor their activities, and study their activities online. Anytime Al Qaeda or ISIS become more and more sophisticated and adopt new technology, we follow that technology and we study their techniques. By doing that, we can predict where they might be uploading the videos online. We actually had that video beforehand and were able to beat them with the release. The CEO of Intel Center is Ben Vinsky, yet another Israeli. They've even begun publishing a magazine on their activities in Afghanistan. 
Uh, these are the kind of things that are very resource intensive. They take computers, they take lots of time, they take people with technical skill. These are not the kinds of things that you would be doing if you were so on the run that you are unable to do anything, to function or to stay informed of what's going on in the world. So we think these are good indicators that if they're able to do all of this, they probably are very able to do planning and to work towards conducting other attacks. Error level analysis shows that the logos of Intel Center and ESA have were added simultaneously. This means that Intel Center has the same editors as Asahab. Asahab is the supposed video production branch of Al-Qaeda. It releases videos in which Bin Laden claims responsibility for 9-11, and the bombings in London and Madrid. He acknowledges the existence of Al-Qaeda, and calls for a war between Muslims. in the new message, Bin Laden tells Muslim militants to ignore the Islamic law that forbids fighting other Muslims. He says, those leaders who are not governing according to Islamic law should be removed. They release audio tapes because they can't convincingly fake the image of Bin Laden. This is the real Bin Laden. Look at his body language, his shoulders, his hands, his face, his facial expression and his graying beard. There is no way that this is the real Bin Laden. Esahab is led by Adam Perlman, yet another Jew. Listen to a terrorist threatening his own country. The streets of America shall run red with blood. He was a suburban California kid, a lover of heavy metal, who became one of the most wanted men on the planet. The grandson of a Jewish doctor, Adam Perlman morphed into Adam Gadon, the American mouthpiece of Al-Qaeda. September 11th demonstrated that America is not invincible. Love nothing better than the heat of battle, the echo of explosions, and slitting the throats of the infidels. Southern California raised Adam Gadon is infamous for these hate-filled rants made while he was Minister of Propaganda for Al-Qaeda. Gadon's videos were polished and sophisticated. Inside Edition has learned that he picked up professional TV skills working on a cable show produced by his aunt. I encouraged him to help on my television show. Inside Edition interviewed the aunt, Nancy Perlman, in 2004. She told us 15-year-old Gadon also co-hosted her Emmy-nominated show, Eco News. I'm Adam Gadon. Oh, you who believe, fight the unbelievers who are closest in proximity to you, and let them find harshness in you, and know that Allah is with those who fear him. This is the golden once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reap the rewards of jihad and martyrdom we have been waiting for. So, unsheathe your sharpened sword and wash. And why should we target their military only? Because to do otherwise would violate the precepts of that idol, that false god called international law, which, as we've conclusively shown, they themselves violate. No, thanks. We have our own law, the law of God. As you start to make your plans, you shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that military bases are the only high-value targets in America and the West. On the contrary, 
we should look for targets which epitomize Western decadence, depravity, immorality, and atheism. Muslims in the West have to remember that they are perfectly placed to play an important and decisive part in the jihad against the Zionists and Crusaders, and to do major damage to the enemies of Islam, waging war on their religion, sacred places, and things, and brethren. This is a golden opportunity, and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the way to show one's appreciation and thanks for this blessing is to rush to discharge one's duty to his ummah and fight on its behalf with everything at his disposal. And in, the, and in the West, you've got a lot at your disposal. Let's take America as an example. America is absolutely awash with easily obtainable firearms. You can go down to a gun show at the local convention center and come away with a fully automatic assault rifle without a background check and most likely without having to show an identification card. So what are you waiting for? But whatever you do, don't wait for tomorrow to do what can be done today. And don't wait for others to do what you can do yourself. And Adam Perlman isn't the only Jew pretending to be an Islamic terrorist. Here in New York, there's a small group of radical Muslims rejoicing in the carnage. They call themselves the Revolution Muslim. Today on their website, they called the alleged shooter, Major Hassan, an officer and a gentleman. They said, quote, we love you. At the same time, they called the slain soldiers terrorists who are in, quote, eternal hellfire. These men are radicals, but they are also Americans, believe it or not, who praise Osama bin Laden and celebrate the 9-11 attacks. So what's so extraordinary is that we found them out in broad daylight, out on the streets of New York, trying to spread their message just a few feet from a peaceful American mosque. These are the brothers of Revolution Muslim. We tell you Muslims to rise up. They are recruiting just outside New York's 96th Street Mosque. The Quran commands that you disavow and make hatred and enmity between democracy, between nationalism, between secularism, and that you see Obama as the enemy he really is. That you see the United States as the enemy it really is. Youssef al Khattab, a Jew who lived in Israel, and abruptly converted to Islam, and Yunus Abdullah Muhammad, also a convert, both born and raised in the United States, a country whose way of life they say they hate. And if you are not a Muslim, they count you as a disbeliever. Their mission? To terrorize you. We're commanded to terrorize the disbelievers. And this is a religion, like We're I said. commanded to terrorize the in disbelievers? The Quran says very clearly in the Arabic language, language Torhibuna. This means terrorize them. It's a command from Allah. So you're commanded. It's a terrorize them. In separate and disturbing interviews, both look to one man as the true living model of Islam, Osama bin Laden. I love Osama bin Laden. I, wallahi, I love him. <laughs> like, I, I can't begin to tell you because I haven't seen that he's really done anything wrong from the Sharia. I love him, like, more than, more than I love myself. It is that jihadist version of Islam which allows them to conclude the killing of American soldiers overseas is justified, that the attack of 9-11 was also justified, and then an attack on almost any American is justified. Their words for Israel aren't as harsh. So you would like Israel to be bombed, Jews to... I, well, I think that's... Do you think that's a, a rational comeback? I'm asking I'm... you. The mosques have tried to prevent that kind of hatred from being preached by calling police. But there is little police or even the FBI can do to stop these radicalizers. They are protected by legal rights given in a country they detest. So later this afternoon, we expect to learn more about what happens now with a young Jacksonville man arrested last week, accused of helping plan an attack at a September 11th memorial ceremony last Friday. The FBI says that Joshua Goldberg thought he was communicating with a Muslim extremist when he encouraged the informant to add rat poison, they say, to shrapnel to make the bomb more lethal. Agents also say the 20-year-old claimed credit online for the attack in Texas at an event where cartoon drawings of the Prophet Muhammad would be on display. Two people died that day. Here at 644, just into our newsroom, possible pictures of the, the suspected federal, the suspect rather, that federal investigators stopped from carrying out a terror plot 
here in Kansas City. Richard Sharp has the latest with our live desk this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, this was published in the Sydney Morning Herald. And they have been tracking this guy online, uh, Joshua Goldberg, who says online he was posting about this. They say this is a picture of him. And he posted uh, some plans online about attacks in Australia and the United States, obviously the one here in Kansas City. He posted these pictures of the bomb in a pressure cooker. And uh, they're saying inside there's two pounds of gunpowder inside. Uh, the, mag uh, the article says that uh, he's been planning this for a while and, and goes on to have some of the details that we've been reporting all morning long. But kind of interesting, not only pictures of the suspect here in this federal case, but also pictures of the bomb. The paper says he was planning attacks in Australia and here in America. Patrick? Thank you for the update, Richard. And uh, yeah, as we've been telling you, FBI agents have prevented a terror attack here in Kansas City. And as Richard said, the Florida man's scheme included exploding pressure cooker bombs during Sunday's Firefighters Memorial Stair Climb. As for motive, Goldberg told undercover informants that he was upset there hadn't been any recent terror attacks in the United States. These people play both sides. They simultaneously pretend to be the Avengers of the Muslim world and the defenders of Western civilization. But in reality, they serve no one but themselves.